Well, good evening, boys and girls. It's Stuart K. Riley. You know, it's almost been two years since I put up YTP News and started doing this whole news thing. And I think we've come a long way since then. It's been a long, hard road, and you and me have run through it together. We saw Daydreamer87 make a fucknut of himself by talking shit about YouTube poop and then getting his ass raped by the whole community. We saw a movie maker kid make fun of Mick Mangles about him being suspended, which ended up giving McMangos a brand new name. We saw the rise and fall of I Am Goomba as it became the number one place to find out what the newest source was, whether it was Weinfeld, Crazy Bruce, or the newest fad like Lemon Party. We saw Wikipedia put YouTube poop on their site as where those smoke they pinch back and talk about wonderful things like audio splicing and volume raising. We saw Insector bring us the video only the brave can poop the kidnapped princess and that turned into a fad for a little while. We saw famed loser YTP for life make Sabrina into a household name, fucking skunk. We saw YouTube partner Mike Mozart speak out against Viacom against taking down YouTube poops and other parody works. We saw May 8 running around hacking YouTube thumbnails all for the lulls, as well as creating a 10 minute ultimate YouTube poop which ended up being nothing but everybody else's poops. And finally coming out of hiding as Toby the Russian Cowboy. And we saw the summer of 2010 when DMCAers started running around taking down videos, which ultimately ended up in the fall of YTP News 1, it getting hacked and a bunch of other shit. And we saw Michael Rosen go from a source, a fad, a troll, and a song. It's hard to believe that I, I, I came from an MS Paint picture and a trial version of Vegas all the way to up to what we have today. But the only thing about the early episodes of YTP News, and even though I gave y'all a download link where y'all could go look at them and stuff, um, I'm, I was still not satisfied with them. And you know, they're pretty much dated now. And some of them had actually pretty interesting stuff on them. But, you know, back then I really didn't know much about making videos, and I really didn't have much know-how on how to do it all. And on top of other things, I didn't have hardly any subscribers at all. So hardly anybody got to see those videos back in the day. And now I know what you're thinking, but Stu, that's a lot of that stuff's old news, like two years old. Well, yeah, but you got to remember, I didn't just talk about news on the show. I, I did other stuff too, so we'll just go, we'll just do that. And maybe we'll redo some of the old interviews I did back in the day that you didn't get to see. And another thing, and I bet a lot of you children are going to like this, I'm going to quit shouting in your face like a fucking faggot like I always do. Like the elitist sex jokes but dinner hating faggot that I am. And instead, I'm just going to talk normal like I always do. I'm not going to shout. I'm going to be nice. I'm not going to be a selfish asshole. I'm going to be a little nice person like I used to be. So, children, what we're going to do is we're going to go. Oh, I can't do it. I'll just do this like I always do. So, anyway, enough wasting time. It's time for a nostalgia freak out. So, here we go. This is YTP News Revisited. And as usual, it took way too long to make that intro, which I didn't need anyway. Well, welcome to YouTube Poop no Oh, whoops, wrong one. There we go. To YouTube Poop News. Taking you back to the past so you don't have to. <laughs> I know, I know, but it just fits so good. And the first thing we're going to talk about on this episode is the absolute first YouTube Poop News episode. Which now, it's less of a news show and more of a history lesson, so listen up! And so it was on June 2009 that I reported that Warris Guy's channel had officially come back up. That's right. The first thing I talked about on the first news show was Walrus Guy. Shows you where I was in the world. Anyway, apparently at this time, Walrus Guy had his channel down. He wasn't doing anything with it. In fact, it was supposed to be gone. But somehow or another, it come back up. 
Most all of his videos were still gone, but it was up again, active, and all that good shit. His response to this was he was not planning to put his channel back up and he didn't intend for it to be back up, but he realized that his fans did not know he was gone. So he figured he might make just one more YouTube poop that said last poop so they'd get the message. He was still yet to make that Mama Luigi poop called I Need YouTube Poop. Of course, now, today, he's working on that YouTube poop, the movie thing. You know, the one he wants to give to film festivals and movie theaters and stuff and kind of promote it. You know, even though it's Walrus Guy, I'm still kind of interested in how it's going to turn out. And it would be interesting to see a crowd of people watch YouTube poop who had never seen poop before. Okay, next subject. Remember that old Dragon Force video? I didn't think so. Anyway, there used to be this old YouTube poop of Dragon Force, and it was just called Dragon Force. If I remember correctly, it actually wasn't that bad. I mean, it wasn't good, but it, was, it wasn't that bad. But the thing about it was, it, it's, it had thousands upon thousands of video responses for some reason or another. Well, at about this time, that video had been taken down by Universal Music Group. Kind of weird because Warner normally does that, but UMG did at that time. And for the life of me, I can't remember the person who had that video up. People tell me, and I'll forget just as soon as I've heard. And why the hell did it have a million responses anyway? I, I guess just because it said Dragon Force. And when Dragon Force went out, everybody started going to Rack Ninja's video called Bros. I have no earthly idea why they started doing that. At, is it just some kind of random crap? But, oh, I see, he renamed it Dragon Force. That's right, but he changed it back to bros later on. Now, here's some, here's a part of the show that needs some explaining. Used to, I tried to keep the news part of the show and the just random crap of the show separate from each other. And to do that, I used to have this little segment I call The Other Shit. Which was just an excuse to put one minute of intro shit in there so I could cover a minute. I talk about sources, I do a poop review, all kind of stuff. So here we go. Here comes the other shit. Time to roll the useless intro. You gotta admit the music was good, though. I certainly love the Thunder Force series. So anyway, on this episode, I did a poop review and I showed off some sources. Now at this time, Kiero Bomber was a brand new name. He, now who is he? He's the guy who ripped all the CDI shit, all the cutscenes and the sh and the backgrounds and the gifs and crap in HD. Well, this was about the time he was just starting on all that. He had done uploaded all the Hotel Mario cutscenes in 1080i resolution. And he offered the cutscenes and backgrounds and gifts so you could make them whatever resolution you wanted. It would be a long time before he would do the same thing to the Zelda series. But the Hotel Mario stuff was enough to keep everybody busy. But it's a great thing he finally did, though. If it weren't for Kiero Bomber, Mad Anonymous would probably not be able to do what he does today. Think about that for a while. And now after this was all said and done, I'd start reviewing a poop. And the first YouTube poop I ever reviewed, and gave a good review to, by the way, which this was 2009 and I was a spinner fag, it was He Touched Me Inappropriately. Now even back then, I said it was pretty timid to, compared to today's poop standards. Of course, by that, I could have been butt hurt because they didn't use sentence mix sex jokes. Instead, they used sensor bleeps. But anyway, let's watch it again. He touched me inappropriately! I want to know what that's from! <laughs> Sensor bleep! But as I was saying, I want somebody to find out what that clip is from. He touched me inappropriately. Bleep! All your base. You know, I'm gonna be fair. I can see how this could have been funny back in 2007, what with the censor bleeps and everything. Because people were just starting to do that, and YouTube poop was still young. But still, there were better poops from better poopers out there, even at this time. Yet this thing got a million views. Literally, it got a million views. It has more than that now. Also, if you look on the YouTube search page, this thing um, has a hacked thumbnail that May Aids put on it. I only eat sh Or is it the bagel? You know, back then I used to not care for Mama Luigi at all. Now I do. I love the mess out of it. Not that it helped this poop any. Well... This was supposed to be a review, right? 
Well, uh, okay. Last time I gave it an 8 out of 10. Today I give it a 2 out of 10. I'm giving it the extra point because it used to be funny 100 years ago, but now it's just overrated. He touched me inappropriately. Thumbs down. And that pretty much covers episode 1 of YouTube Poop News. After it was done, I showed off the YouTube poop of the week. I used to show a new poop every week. Now it's just when I feel like it, and now I call it just the featured poop. Well, back then, I showed off how Metallica became famous by Crazy Cat 13, which is still cool. No, seriously, that is still cool. I want that played at my fucking funeral. Now, on episode two, I went ahead and I got to the where are they now kind of thing, where I basically found stuff that looked like or referenced YTP characters. For example, Sonic Unleashed and Morshoe. Looks good, don't it? Mm -hmm. That there chocolate chip cream sundae supreme is the prime. Talks with his hands, voiced by Dan Green and a whole bunch of other shit. Look, he's got the mustache, he's got the hat, the hairstyle, the fatness, it's more shoe. If you don't love it, you get your money back. Hey! It even kind of sounds like it. I know, this is a hundred years old, but still, people didn't know about it back in that, back in them days. So yeah, more shoe in a new video game. But where's more shoe in real life? Well, long time ago, some brand new kid on YCP showed us a video. Then I'm telling you, it's more shoe more than anything. Even does the catchphrase in the exact same key. And after that, I went on to episode three. Now, episode three, I talked more about real YouTube poop characters. I even made this whole elaborate thing talking about how Guanam used to be on a talk show, which it was really Johnny Carson and his good sidekick, Ed McMahon. No, it sucks that both of these guys are dead now. They were really cool. I even went on to say that Guanam got sacked and replaced with David Letterman, who apparently is Mama Luigi. And then I showed off the guy who uh, was dressed like Guanam, even had the beard. Now, if you've ever heard of Master Guanam, which he's gone now, but Master Guo actually made a YouTube poop of this guy. I wish I still had this video. I just have this clip from the news show. But anyway, you get the point. I actually kind of felt sorry for this guy after a while because the last time I looked at this video, the comments were all squadala, we were off, and he's all like, what the fuck is all that about? Oh, and also this guy's name is Ouija, but who gives a shit? And the last thing I talked about on episode three was the Morshoe Show. Never heard of the Morshoe Show? Well, I'll tell you two things about it. Windows Movie Maker and MS Paint. Normally, that's all you need to know to know whether you want to watch this or not. But believe it or not, whether you're a spadinner fag or a sex joke lover, or you just want to see something different, it's actually a, it was actually pre a pretty decent thing. For something that had nothing but drugs, sex, and, uh, what was it, necrophilia jokes, it was, uh, it was better. It was better than a lot of other stuff. Come on in. Did you bring the food? Mm. Okay, great. What did you bring? Lamp oil. Yeah, it was better than that, but yeah, this is basically most of it. It wasn't really what you'd call YouTube poop anyway. In fact, he didn't even call it YouTube poop. So whether you want to like it or not is just up to you. But anyway, when I had made that video, he had just closed down his channel saying he was done with the Morshu show and would probably come back with something even better. Which he never has, but I think he's that guy who calls himself known as the Josh. Now on episode 4, here's where it gets interesting. You guys are going to get a chance to see a long lost poop of mine. Well, at least part of it. Squad in the house! That small clip right there with Guanam and Link, that right there, the rest of this is just from something else. That was Guanam Come Home. And ever since I made that poop during that time, and I kept on getting <laughs> PMs and comments and everything asking, where did I get them sprites? Well, ZeldaPower.com is where I got them from. Then later on in episode four, I talked about how on the, um, a bunch of the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog poops, what well, Robotnik poops, whatever, um, some company called The Orchard kept trying to take them down. They haven't done it in a long, long time, but sometime during 2009's late mid time, 